again, this is Deb and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. It's now time to start using Access. So what we've got here is just a blank desktop. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to search for Access using my search at the bottom here. Now I'm using Windows 10, so if you're using a different version of Windows, then it might be slightly different. But I'm just going to type in Access. And you can see there the app is the first one listed. So I can click it just to open it. But because I'm going to be using Access all the time, what I prefer to do is right click and I'm going to select Pin to Taskbar. And what that will do is it will pin the Access app to my taskbar at the bottom here so that I can access it whenever I need. It just makes it a little bit easier. I don't have to go in and search for it every single time. So I would recommend that if you are using Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 7, that you do pin it to your taskbar. So I can now just go in and click on the Access icon and that will open up the application. So this is where you'll be taken when you first open up Access, and this is what we call the Start Screen. And there are some buttons on here which should look fairly familiar if you're used to using other Microsoft applications. So if you just glance your eyes up to the top right hand corner, you'll see we have a little question mark just there which will allow you to access um, the Access Help. You could also press the F1 shortcut key to get into that. We have our Minimize if you want to minimize the application our restore down or restore up button and we also have our close button in the top corner. I also have there my account details so if I wanted to see more about that I could jump into there. So those should be reasonably familiar to you if you're if you're used to using other Microsoft applications. We then have a menu bar on the left hand side you can see currently home is selected. And what I have on this home page is I have a number of different templates that I can select and the ones that you can see here aren't by any means all of them. If I want to see the whole lot of templates I have on offer, I can click that more templates link on the right hand side. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. I just want you to cast your eyes underneath that. So we have a recent and a pinned tab. Now, if this is the first time you're opening Access and you haven't created any databases yet, then your recent list is going to be blank, much like mine is just here. If I click on pinned, you'll also see that that's blank. Now, when I start creating a database, what I could do if I wanted to is I could choose to pin it and it will then appear underneath this pinned section. So in general, the kinds of databases that you might want to pin would be ones that you use frequently. So it just enables you to access them, get to them a lot quicker. I then also have options in the left hand menu for creating a new database and also for opening an existing database. So if I have one stored off somewhere on my local drives or maybe in the cloud, OneDrive for example, I could go in here and I could browse to that database to open it. Now I'm going to click on new for the time being because we're going to direct our attention to the different templates that we have available. And in Access 2019, databases can be of two types. You can have a desktop database, which is more of your traditional uh, kind of database, which sits on your desktop and you would in general use it locally for maintaining databases. And alternatively, there is the web app, which is a database that is used online that you can share with others. Now, the reason why you might want to use a template is that it's a really good kind of jumping off point. So instead of just being faced with a blank database that you need to construct yourself, you might want to have a starting point that you can build on. And there are a whole host of templates available to you within Access. And you can see some that we have here. These are some of the more popular ones you might want to use. There is obviously a blank database which you could use. We've got asset tracking, contacts, students, event management, so on and so forth. So it really depends on the type of database that you want to create as to which one of these is going to be most useful to you. If I scroll down, you can see eventually we do get to the end of the templates. Now, if you can't find what you're looking for just here, you do have a search bar at the top to search for more templates. So if I was searching for uh, contacts, let's just type that in. and I'm going to click the magnifying glass. 
That's going to go away, it's going to search all of the available access templates and it's going to pull back any that are kind of related to or might be useful if I want to create a database of contacts. To come out of here, just click on that little back link and it will take you back to that main starting template page. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of these templates and we are going to use this one just here, the contacts template. So let's click on that. Now what I'm presented with when I select my template is I can see a preview essentially of what that contact list database is going to look like. Obviously it's fairly blank at the moment. I also have a description on the right hand side. So it says provided by Microsoft Corporation. And then I have quite a lengthy description as to what this database is all about. So essentially it creates and maintains a comprehensive database of your customers, partners and vendors using this popular template. It then shows me the download size. So this is a fairly small template at 143K. And underneath that, I then have an option here for choosing my file name. So essentially what I want this database to be called. And the information I have in there currently is really just the default name that Access assigns to this database. So it says database1.acdb. And it's worth noting that acdb is the file extension for databases in Access. And then underneath that, it shows me the path or where this database is going to be stored. So I can see currently that it's going to be stored on my C drive in my documents folder. And if I wasn't happy with that, I could go in and I could use this browse button and choose a different location in which to store that database. Now, I'm not going to change anything at this stage. We're going to actually save this database using a different name later on. So I'm happy with those defaults. Now, one thing else to point out before we actually create this database is just these arrows that we have on the right and left hand side. If I want to scroll through more of the templates, I can click this arrow and it will take me to the next template along. So if I wasn't particularly sure that that contacts database was exactly what I wanted, I could use my arrows and go through and see if there's another template that's more appropriate. Now, I'm just going to go back because I am happy with that contacts database and I'm going to accept all these defaults and I'm going to click that big create button in the middle there. So what we're looking at now is a contact list or a contact management database and it's fairly empty at the moment. We haven't added any contacts into here yet, but it gives me a really good starting point for which to start my contact list. So you can see here it has definitions for the information that I will need to have in this contact list. So you can see here, it's got first name, last name, company, job title, category, email address, business phone, home phone, mobile, zip. So some basic fields that I can go in and I can complete. And of course you can modify these, you can remove fields you don't want, and you can add fields that you do want, which we'll get into later on in the course. Now the panel on the left hand side that you can see here tells you what's included in this template. So you can see that we have some tables, some queries, forms, reports, macros and modules. And again, I'm going to explain what each of those mean during the course. But this in general is typical of what you will see when you open up a template. Now, it's worth noting that sometimes when you open a template, you may receive a security warning. Access does tend to default to being rather cautious when you're opening new files. So before you run it, you need to consider where that template came from. So the one that we've just opened was from the Microsoft website. It's an official template. So I'm pretty sure that that is a safe place to download this template from. However, if you've got your template from some other source, you might want to proceed with a little bit of caution. You don't want to download something horrible onto your PC in the form of a template. So just be aware of that. And if you do get a security warning pop up, if you determine that it does come from a safe location, just click the enable content button when you see that warning message. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to close this database down again. And I'm going to reopen access. And I just want to show you that now, because we've created a database underneath recent, you can see our database sitting there. So let's click on it to reopen it. 
And this is what you'll see sometimes is you'll get a welcome screen and it really kind of walks you through what the context database is all about. So you have some information just here and you also have a little video if you want to watch that. And all this screen does is it really gives you information on how to use this template. Now it's worth noting, and the reason why I've kind of shown you this, is that you can create your own help screens and welcome screens as well, which can sometimes be particularly useful if you're sharing a database that you've created with other people. So it gives them an idea of how they can use that database. Again, I'm not going to get too much into that at the moment, but I really did think that that was worth highlighting so you know that you can do that. So I'm just going to close this window down and I'm actually going to close all of Access down again in preparation for our next module. So that's this module done. What we're going to move on to in the next module is saving and opening databases. So please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free Microsoft Access 2019 course, including downloadable exercise files, click over there. And click over there to watch all the videos in this Access 2019 playlist.